In this part of the demonstration, I'm going to show you how to use R to conduct an independent samples t-test. The specific research question I am addressing is, does treatment result in a higher average mass score in the population? I can state this as an alternative hypothesis, which says that the, the treatment group mean is larger than the control group mean. One way to write that is to say that the alternative hypothesis is that the population mean for the treatment minus the population mean for the control is greater than zero. It's a positive number. I will test that against a null hypothesis, which says that the population mean for the treatment minus the population mean for the control is less than or equal to zero. I like to specify the null and alternative hypothesis this way because it makes the order of subtraction very apparent. And that information is important when you go to run the analysis in R. Because you need to make sure that R is conducting the order of subtraction in the same way that you have specified under the null and alternative hypothesis. If it's not, then you need to sort of change the way you call R. There are two ways to conduct the independent samples t-test in R. The first way I'll show you uses the formula notation. And that's going to be t.test, where x mass score tilde x dollar sign group. In this formula notation, the value on the left-hand side of the tilde sign is the dependent variable. The variable on the right-hand side of the tilde sign is the independent variable. Um, so here I have mass score as my dependent variable and group as my independent variable. This is a directional test, and I need to specify that the alternative is greater. Because of the way I specified my null and alternative hypothesis, I'm saying that the mean for the treatment minus the mean for control is going to be a positive number. It's an upper tail test. However, I need to make sure that R is going to do the order of subtraction that way. I run the test, and the title of the output shows that it's a Welch two-sample t-test, and that's correct. That is the independent samples t-test, which does not assume equal variances. It's a Welch two-sample t-test. The line that begins with data shows me that the dependent variable is mass score and the independent variable is group. Next, you see the observed value of the test statistic, and that's negative 3.1047. It has 37.905 degrees of freedom and a p-value of 0.9982. But here's where I need to be careful. Let me check the order of subtraction that R is using. If I look at the bottom of the output, it shows the mean in group 0 as being 203.085 and the mean in group 1 as 216.86. Well, group 1 is my treatment group. The order of the means listed here is important because it's taking the mean of the group listed first and subtracting it by the mean of the group listed second. So in other words, R is taking group zero minus group one. That is, it's taking the control group minus the treatment group. And that's the opposite order of subtraction that I specified in my null and alternative hypothesis. So this is actually conducting the, the test in the opposite order that I would like. To fix this, I need to restate my null and alternative hypothesis as a lower tail test so that it would be that the mean for the control minus the mean for the treatment is less than zero or a negative number. To run R as a lower tail test, I change the alternative to less. And now I run the analysis again. And here, you can see that the test statistic is exactly the same, degrees of freedom are the same, but the p-value is different. I have the correct p-value now. If I look at the order of the means, it's still listing group 0 mean first, and then the group 1 mean second, so it's doing group 0 minus group 1. Uh, but that order subtraction is okay now, because now I have switched around my alternative hypothesis so that it's the mean of the control minus the mean of the treatment. Uh, which should be less than zero or a negative number. And so this is the correct output. Um, that is the correct p-value. We have a p-value of 0 0.001798.
That is less than a significance level of 0 0.05. Therefore, we reject the null hypothesis and conclude that the population mean for the treatment group is larger than it is for the control group. Looking at the other parts of the output, we can see that the alternative hypothesis is that the true difference of means is less than zero. That's how we verify that we did a lower tail test. And the next part is showing the 95% confidence interval. It was a one tail test, therefore it's giving you a one-sided interval. It, in this case, it's only giving you an upper bound. With 95% confidence, we see that the control group mean is at least 6.29 points lower than the treatment group mean. There is another way to conduct an independent samples t-test in R, and it allows you to specify the order of subtraction in the t-test. The trade-off is that you first have to subset the data and create data for one group, and then separately create data for the second group. I'm going to create my treatment group data first. That's going to be txt, which is the object I'm going to create. And I'm going to say, let's take the mass score where the group variable equals 1. So this line is how I'm subsetting the data. I'm saying create this object called txt and take those mass scores for the cases where group equals 1. And that's going to give me the data for my treatment group. I'll just copy that to the next line. And create an object for my control group, CTL, and I'm going to say give me the mass scores where the group equals zero. That's my control group. I'll create both of those objects and I can go to the console and just check them to make sure that I do just have a single variable and data for that single variable. And that's the case. I don't want to have a bunch of different variables. I want to just have data for one variable when I create the subset. To execute the t-test analysis on R, I'm going to say t.test x equals txt, which is my treatment group data, and y equals ctl, which is my control group data. This is important because R is going to do x minus y. In this case, I've said x equals my treatment group data, and y is my control group data. Therefore, I know it's going to do treatment minus control which is the order of subtraction I specified in the null and alternative hypothesis. It's an upper tail test, and I'll specify that as alternative equals greater. I run the analysis, and we can see that it is indeed a Welch two-sample t-test, which is a t-test that does not assume equal variances. My t-statistic is 3.1047 with 37.905 degrees of freedom, and a p-value of 0 0.001798. That p-value is less than a significance level of 0 0.05, therefore I reject the null hypothesis. If you look at the bottom of the output, you can see that it lists mean of x as 216.86, and mean of y as 203.085, and remember it's doing the order of subtraction such that it's that first mean that's listed minus the second mean that's listed. That's my treatment group minus the control, and that's the order of subtraction that I want. So I know that the analysis was run correctly and that the p-value is correct. Uh, in the middle part of the output, you see that 95% confidence interval, and we can see that with 95% confidence, the treatment group mean is at least 6.29 points larger than the control group mean. This method of running the independent samples t-test is nice because you can force the order of subtraction to be a particular way. It has a little bit of complication in that you have to correctly create the subset first before calling the function. And um, if you're not comfortable with subsetting data, then this could be more problematic for you. It's nice because you have the correct order of subtraction.